please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Hey, welcome back everybody. Part 6 here in our tube gear or tube amp troubleshooting series. And we've moved on to a new piece of gear now. This is a Knight. Um, some, sometimes you will see it listed as KG85. Sometimes you will see it listed as KB85. I'm not 100% sure, but if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, I believe one of those was a factory built model. And one of those versions was the... Um, the build-it-yourself kit type model and honestly I don't know which one this is because it nowhere on it does it say let me flip it around so you can see it all right as you can see here on the back of it is the night 60 watt stereo basic amplifier a product of Allied Radio Company and typical uh, connections on the back here but the story behind this amp was I was on vacation probably some eight or nine years ago with my family we were staying in Dis Disney World in Florida and we were having a good time and it was just one of those things where in the evenings we were sitting around and I had some spare time so I get searching on eBay and I came across this unit and I've always wanted a nice one with a nice clean cage, good chrome and whatnot. And um, this one was sitting on there for sale and so I ended up, um, you know, doing a couple emails back and forth or um, uh, eBay messages with the owner. And he assured me that it had just been gone through by a very qualified tech. It had basically been restored and it was in great working condition, um, ready to be sold type thing. So I did the make an offer. We agreed on a price. I bought it. It showed up at my house just about the time I got back from vacation. And I plugged it up and it had an issue. If I if I can if memory is serving me right, I think we were red plating somewhere on the output tubes. And it was one of those things where I contacted the seller and it just he he was adamant it had been gone through and it was working when he shipped it. And it just it got ugly basically. Um, and finally I just walked away from the thing. Um, and so this has sat on a shelf ever since and it's uh, deteriorated state and it needs fixing. So I thought we could dive into it together and figure out um, what's wrong because my memory is not serving me so well. I've gone through a lot of amplifiers in, in eight or nine years. So let's plug it up and see what, what we get. Okay, so I've got the unit flipped upside down. I don't have the cover off and I'm not taking it off for a reason. I'm going to see if you can look inside. Remember, we always start out these things, um, but even before we bring them up on a Variac, because um, remember, that's what this series is about, teaching you how to troubleshoot tube amps. Uh, and tube gear. Remember, first thing we do is a visual inspection. Well, without even taking the bottom off, do you see anything here that might be a problem? Well, I can tell you right now, if you guess this capacitor right here, this is a, an old electrolytic with the, uh, the paper end caps and whatnot. This thing, um, if I'm guessing, is from the uh, early 1960s right here. So, for this guy to have claimed that this was completely gone through and restored by a highly qualified technician that left in a large electrolytic like this for 1960, um, I'm calling BS already. Let's get the bottom off of this. Okay, I've kind of gone through and done a visual inspection at this point in time, and um, best I can tell, this unit has never been restored. The two can caps on the top are original. This capacitor is original. I can't even remember the last time I saw a 700 working volt DC capacitor here. Um, all these uh, the little resistors on the uh, tubes here are all carbon comp originals. Um, the only thing that may have changed is this uh, orange drop here on an input. <laughs> coupling cap. Um, so really not even a, a uh, high voltage scenario there with that. And um, so at any rate, I've done the visual. I think it's all original for, <laughs> I don't know what, unless it was this, the total restoration. I can see that this little wire here has been soldered. Um, so maybe these two driver boards have been dropped out. By the way, these are a pain. Um, you can't get to them from the top side. You have to you have to basically take out all this and drop these boards down and then restore them and then put them back in and solder everything back in place. So, um, 
Let's uh, flip it over and bring it up on a variac and see what happens. All right, just um, on this, it uh, looks like it has four brand new 6L6GCs made in Russia. So these are fairly new um, tubes here. And um, all four of them look brand new. These are beautiful. Check this out. Um, made the 66th week of 1952. Um, an Amprex uh, Bugleboy G GZ34 or... Uh, 5A or 4, and there's one on the other side too. I don't know if you notice this, but it's matching, matching cans here, matching uh, another uh, Amprex Bugle Boy. That's $200 worth of tubes right there. So um, I, uh, it's got um, some um, Hammond um, EF86 is it here on the front end, which are really Mullards. Um, and then it has, it looks like, some. Two Mullard Early Shield 12AX7s. I'm betting these are original. These are not because uh, they're Mullards, but they're made by Hammond. And these are certainly not original. But let's, uh, let's power the unit on here. Let me start bringing the unit up. I do have it plugged in right now with a sine wave being fed to it. So that's about 50 volts into it right there. And... Um, just let that sit a minute and let it acclimate and then we'll turn it on up to about 60 volts there and we're starting to let it acclimate a little bit. Um, I'll go ahead and get it up to 75 volts on the input. Ah, I heard something popping. Did you hear that? Okay, at this point I've got it up to 100 uh, 90 volts, and I hear. Ugh. I hear a little bit of uh, crackling in there, <laughs> and I'm not getting anything through the amplifier right now, um, even though I'm feeding into it at this point here with. Um, with a signal. Still nothing on the output. That's up to 100 volts and I'm starting to draw pretty good current right here too. I'm up at uh, about 2 amps right there. Hmm. No output whatsoever. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. I'm going to flip it upside down. Okay, let's orient ourselves a little bit to this amp, okay? So here in the middle, we've got four sockets. So you've got a pair of push-pull. Uh, this amp originally came with the EL37s. In this case, uh, someone has put 6L6s in it, which should be fine. Similarly here, you've got um, the other side. So just think of this as probably left channel. This is probably right channel. Um, over here, you've kind of got the power supply, basically. This is a large choke that's used on the front end. And I'll walk you through the schematic in a little bit. This is a 16 microfarad capacitor that comes off of the uh, high voltage. This is two uh, GZ34s, and these are ran in parallel with each other to basically double the current rating of a single GZ34. So basically, your high voltage comes off of that, goes through this cap, then feeds it down into these large filter caps here, and there's some dropping resistors along the way used with these that ultimately get you voltages to feed uh, things like your plate voltage here, your screen voltage here, and the voltage is needed over on this end, which is your preamp front end, okay? Um, just a visual inspection. I know some of this stuff here looks kind of like old and cruddy and uh, looks like it's got um, some corrosion and whatnot on it. Well, it's just a piece of plastic tubing that uh, the wax is dry. It was wax coated and the wax is dried up, so no big deal there. Similarly, uh, they're just using some tubing here to keep wires kind of a uh, wire organization, I would call it. Um, let's see, back here you've got, this is the output jack section. I can see coming off the 16 ohm taps here, you have a capacitor and a resistor. Anytime you see that coming off a 16 ohm tap, a capacitor and resistor in parallel, that's typically your feedback uh, loop. That would then, and you can see it comes over here, ties down to a little place on a lug, a terminal strip lug comes over here and feeds back into the preamp. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. 
Um, let's see, we got a capacitor here on the front end. It's just basically a noise capacitor on the uh, on the switch. We'll end up replacing that with a XY safety cap. Um, we've got our fuse holder here. Um, similarly, uh, we've got some kind of test. I'll need to look at the schematic here on what this test switch here is for. Um, okay, this is your input jack and a mono stereo switch, and this is a... Uh, a coupling cap on the front end here. Um, then we get into these are the driver boards and we'll have to pull those out to really talk about them but I'll show you something here in a second on them. Um, these are the five grid resistors here feeding into these tubes on a 6L6 here. If you'll notice the grid is pin 5 and you've got this little resistor that goes from pin 5 to pin 6. Well pin 6 is not used at all in a uh, 6L6 tube. So they're just using this uh, empty pin socket right here as a jumper point to feed from the preamp through here into the grid. And this is just a jumper point going through this 1K ohm resistor here into the grid of the tube. So these are your kind of grid input resistors here. And they seem to be intact at this point in time. Uh, let me grab the camera and show you something. Okay, without even pulling these boards out, I can see that this is a large coupling cap right here, and there's another one right here. And these are the old kind of plastic casing um, paper. So I know that these are likely leaky, and I know that um, um, these have not been replaced. So whatever restoration was promised to me, fully, fully restored unit here, I'm not seeing it. All right, and then one last thing I'll show you here. On the front of this lamp, and it's a little hard to see here, there are four jacks here that you would plug, um, you know, just a quarter inch phono plug into, right? And on the other side here, what you've got are jacks with switches on them that when, when there's nothing inserted, those switches are closed right here. And when you insert a jack into it, if you'll notice here, it breaks open that switch and then what this is is this is the cathode current going from into your tubes here um, so the basically between the cathode resistor here and ground they bring you through these jacks and if you plugged an ammeter in here then you would be running the cathode current of your tube through your ammeter and you could measure the cathode current well um, we all know that in a typical vacuum tubes setup Typically, cathode current is equal to roughly the plate current because the um, current flows through the tube from the plate down through the cathode to ground, okay? So if you're measuring cathode current, you're basically measuring plate current. And at that point in time, you can use these four jacks here to get the plate current about equivalent on these tubes. Then you would have biased this amplifier properly. Okay, here's the problem though. If for whatever reason these jacks over time lose tension and you don't have good connection there, even without a probe plugged into it, you lose cathode bias right here, which is really not good for your tubes. Um, so I'm not a big fan of these. I, I'm a fan, maybe we rewire these and don't have these jacks in here. And uh, there's a couple good forums online about uh, that have um, forum posts about the KG85. And some of them, what they talk about doing is replacing these little um, jumpers here um, switched um, jacks with um, one ohm sensing resistors and then use this measurement here as a measurement across the one ohm resistor and then you would basically be reading voltage which would, since it's a one ohm and you do um, I is equal to V over R, you basically, your voltage would equal your current. So if you're me measuring, you know, um, 45 volts here, you might be measuring um, 45 milliamps on the other side. If, if you used a 10 ohm resistor, that would be the case. any rate, uh, we'll get into that more if we end up doing a restoration on this. I'm just walking you through the amp a little bit right now. These are your cathode resistors here. They seem to be intact in good shape. So I'm not seeing anything visually wrong here. Um, I think we're going to plug it up and start doing some measurements and see if we can figure out a little more that way. All right, before we start measuring with a voltmeter over there, I thought we'd acclimate ourselves a little bit to the schematic so we know what we're chasing. And if you'll notice here, this uh, schematic shows we start out with an EF86 on the front end. 
Then we drive an ECC83, which it plays the role of phase inverter, which then drives over here, splits the signal, and the two EL34s in this case. Hmm, what am I showing you here? goes through the output transformer and out to the loudspeaker, and then you're feeding all this via power supply here, high voltage transformer, feeding into the two plates, the two sides of the uh, secondary high voltage tap. Typically, one goes to one plate in the GZ34, the other goes into the other plate, and then you pull the high voltage DC off of the cathode here. It goes over through a choke, through some filter caps, and feeds the rest of the amplifier. Well, if you said, Mark, you're not showing me a KG85, I would say you're right. I am actually showing you the schematic here for a Mullard um, 520 amplifier. It is the classic 20 watt amplifier. And believe it or not, this schematic and what I'm about to show you here, which is the Mullard, um, the uh, Knight KG85, it is the exact same schematic. Um, so it's a few slight variations here and there, but for the most part, uh, Knight basically copied the uh, classic Mullard 520 schematic. And as you can see here, feeds in through the EF86, through the 12AX7, into, in there, this case, the EL37, out through the output transformer. Um, over here, you've got the power supply coming in, and this is where it differs from the Mullard circuitry a little bit. If you'll notice here, the secondary high voltage winding here, you've got red, red, and you've got the center tap tied to ground. One side of the red goes over and feeds to both plates in a GZ34. The other side comes over and feeds into both plates tied in parallel on another GZ34. And then we've strapped these two cathodes together on this GZ34 here. If you'll notice, it's being fed by the... Uh, um, 10 volt, 10 volt secondary winding on this transformer because you're running basically, you're running the 5 volt in this GZ34 filament in series with the 5 volt filament here um, for your heaters um, filaments on this. And then you're taking off of that right here 550 volts DC that, that you're then bringing over, feeding up, going through transformer here and remember before it fed over and went up and I call that a transformer it's a choke what am I thinking um, this is where that 16 volt 7 16 microfarad 700 volt capacitor sits at it goes between this point and ground coming off of this common point right here so really what you've done is you bootstrap these two um, GZ 34s in parallel with each other to give you twice the current rating that a single GZ34 would have. And then once you get on the other side of this choke, what is happening here is basically they're then doing a split rail power supply. They're feeding out, going through this filter capacitor for the left channel. They're feeding out and through these filter capacitors and dropping resistors to feed this channel up here, the right channel. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So a couple things we're going to want to check for when we go over there. We're going to want to check, make sure we've got good voltage coming out right here. Um, we're going to want to come on the other side of this choke and probably start measuring at points on this. Um, on This here represents a multi-section cap because of these dotted lines. So we're going to want to start checking various points in this multi-section cap for two things. One, make sure we got the right voltages and two, to make sure that we don't have a lot of um, AC still still sitting over here at this point. Maybe these capacitors along here are starting to age and they're not uh, filtering out the ripple like they should be. Okay, the other thing we're going to start checking is in between stages over here. So you come out of this EF86 right here off the plate of it and we're feeding over into this amplifier here. Then we're basically coming out of the plate of it and we're going through a 25.25 um, microfarad coupling capacitor which then feeds over here. We're going to want to see if this coupling capacitor is leaky because it could be feeding um, high voltage across here onto the grid of these tubes causing them to heat up. Anyway, we're going to get in, we're going to use the schematic in one hand and the voltmeter in another basically 
and start dissecting this thing a little bit. Okay, as you can hear, I've got a lot of hum out of one speaker, but not out of the other. I'm going to put this on dummy load just so I, just so I don't have to listen to that the whole time. Um, and, you know, I did something interesting here. I, I grabbed um, a cable, if I can show you, and I'm running this out of my signal generator. One end's B and C. The other end is just a set of banana clips. Instead of feeding in the actual RCA jacks on the back of this, I have uh, kind of brought it um, over and I'm feeding it via these little jumpers here. And what that will enable me to do is play around with feeding this unit at different points in the circuit. So let me show you here if I can. One thing I want to do, so I know this coupling capacitor goes from here to here because I could see it on the other side. If you'll notice on one side of the coupling capacitor here, I'm getting 441 volts here, okay? On the other side of the coupling cap here, I am now getting, uh, what we got here? You guys are probably having a hard time seeing that because of the glare, but it's 4.4 volts. So there's a little bit of leakage going on here. There's four volts leaking across, but that's not horrible. And I'm going to flip this back to speaker. And I'm going to just touch down here and feed my signal in on the other side. So I'm basically, by at this point, I'm bypassing the whole preamp, right? And I'm feeding into the output tubes here, okay? And as you can hear, I've got signal coming out on one side. So... I know my problem doesn't lie over here with these two tubes and their ability to amplify. Alright, over here I'm going to check again. Um, we've got 258 volts on this side. Notice, notice over here I had 441. Something's not good in here. This one I've got 258. Uh, maybe I do have some power supply problems. On the other side here, I have 4.2 volts. So I know this is the side I want to feed out of. I don't want to get my, uh, don't want to fry my, <laughs> my, um, my signal generator by going to the other side. But listen. So I'm now bypassing this side, this whole preamp, and feeding into these two tubes over here. And what that's telling me is my problem lies here, not getting signal through um, here over. Not that the amp doesn't have more than one problem, because I promise you we're probably dealing with that right now. But um, I definitely am not getting signal through the driver boards over here. So if you think about the schematic here, what I've just done, right? I basically just um, inserted the signal generator right on this, on the not on this side of the cap, because that's where the high voltage is at, right on this side of the cap right here, and I fed straight into these this tube here, and I, or straight in over on this side, and I got amplification out on that side, and I did the same thing down here on the other side. So what did I, in essence, do? I eliminated all of this side of the circuit as being where my audio signal loss is taking place. And my signal loss is somewhere here over on this side, is what I found out. Now, while I've got it open, I want to do some searching around for voltages and whatnot. If I come over here to the um, to these grid resistors on each of these tubes, you notice what have I got? Four point some volts. The same four point some volts that were leaking across coming through this grid resistor into here. I do want to get that four volts down, but at least it's not a hundred volts sitting on the grids of these tubes. Wow, I think I just figured out the whole problem here, okay? <laughs> so I got to looking at this and I'm looking at how the schematic kind of works and the way it, the way it happens here is uh, one jack on one side at the bottom here feeds this board, right? So this is a whole board. Uh, it should be EF86, then it should be 12AX7, then it should feed out of that into the uh, output tubes here. And then the signal coming out of the other jack gets fed over here, comes in, um, goes through EF86, through 12AX7, and likewise into the, uh, into the 
output tubes here. Well, check this out. Not sure if you can see it clearly. This is an EF86. This is an EF86. This is a 12AX7. This is a 12AX7. So this unit got shipped to me with the tubes in the wrong places. This should be F86. Then we can unplug this. And I have no idea if we've done damage to these tubes in this process um, of having them plugged in wrong. We will have to we will have to figure that out. Let me get these plugged in properly. Okay, now we have them uh, inserted properly. EF86 12A. X7 EF86 12AX7. Let's flip it back over and see what happens. Okay, we've got it plugged in again. Uh, this time I'm feeding back into both RCA jacks. And let's bring the voltage up on this unit. Wow. <laughs> That's flat out comical. We've got good signal feeding through both sides of this amplifier. Let me kill the input signal. Wow. Guess what? Most of our hum went away too. I can still hear a little bit in the background, but not a ton. Alright, at this point I'm looking at a sine wave here coming out of the left and right channel. That's all I'm doing is measuring across the uh, speaker outputs on both sides. And you can see there's a good bit of jumping around. There's a lot of noise on top of these. You can see that sine wave kind of comes up and then it takes a, takes a little dip and then finishes its cycle. You can also notice one um, half is a little bigger than the other half. I mean, one, one sine wave is a little larger than the other sine wave. Just shows one side of this has a little more gain than the other, and it could be could be some weak tubes on the uh, front end on either the EF86, more than likely, uh, maybe one of those a little stronger than the other. But that's not what I'm worried about. We can get that fixed. I'm worried about all this noise sitting here on top of this. Okay, remember on the plate. Uh, I mean, on the uh, on a any type of uh, octal tubes like this, KT88, EL34, 6L6s, whatever. Pin number three, so you kind of start over here with the little keyway and count around this way. So you've got one, two, and this would be pin number three right here, okay? We've got, what, 457 volts DC on it, okay? Here's a little trick I want to show you. Even if you don't have an oscilloscope, flip it over to me measuring AC volts. Okay, and what are we reading right there? We're reading about 5.3 AC volts on this with no signal being applied whatsoever, okay? Let's go measure the other one over here, right? Um, one, two, three. Right here. Similarly, we've got 4.7 volts of AC. We've got... Um, 458 volts of DC on there. We should not have AC sitting on pin number three right here. What that tells me, if you come back over to the schematic, um, as we come out of this um, rectifier, go through the choke, right, that very first point that we're measuring right here that feeds the plates of these tubes, if you'll notice, um, is right along in here. So it's after this uh, 60 microfarad section and after this 30 microfarad section, we've still got a good bit of ripple sitting right here, that, which just means these cap sections are weak right now is what it's, what it's really telling me. The other thing I want to go back and check those voltages again on the input over here. Because remember we had 400 and some volts on one of these and 200 and some on the other. All right, here we go. We're going to measure right here. It's four volts. We do have a little bit of leakage going on. Now look at that. 270 volts on this one over here. Right? And what do we have here? 289. So that, you notice the little difference between those two? That, what is it, 20 volt difference right there basically? Could be the difference in the amplitude we were seeing. And so what if you trace that back, remember we split railed the power supply. It very well could be you've got a lot of high ESR 
um, and you've got these one of these can caps leaking down on either this side or this side um, causing it to have it would actually be on this side because what do we have here 274 volts versus the 289 so over here um, you know we could be losing some voltage because of uh, resistance building up inside of that can cap right there so I think the next step I'm going to take on this amp is to replace these two can caps just because I wouldn't want to do one without the other cosmetically it would look kind of weird I definitely want to replace this um, whether it's showing any signs of being bad or not I don't care I'm going to replace it and whether I like it or not I'm going to pull these boards and recap because I know these coupling caps are leaking four volts across to the grids of my um, of my output tubes and I don't like that so um, it could be much worse but these things are aged and they're nothing going to do nothing but get worse but uh, yeah to say this unit was fully restored that was far from true and then to ship it to me with the tubes in the wrong locations and blowing my mind um, I do remember unboxing this they had shipped it with all the tubes intact um, so we're going to go through the restoration much like we did those fisher units but hopefully you learned something today on just how to diagnose this a little bit and maybe we'll bring it back at some point and show you what we're replacing what all we've done and uh, let you hear this thing when we get it there thanks for watching everybody hope you learned something we certainly learned we had um, tubes in the wrong place and we certainly learned we've got some hum in our power supply and we've also got some voltage uh, drop differences here causing us to have some um, some variations in voltages here on the output. Now, could also be some resistors on either of these boards as the high voltages are getting fed across. They're a little out of spec as well. I peeked under through the tube hole a minute ago with a flashlight and I noticed that both of these still have the original carbon comp resistors on them, so they've not been restored at all. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you learned something. We'll keep bringing pieces of gear like this and dissecting them. Um, thanks again for watching.